Hello, welcome to this new module on analyzing financial statements. Um, this is one of the most important modules in finance. If you think of finance as um, the three main branch, uh, one is the time value of money, the other is analyzing the relationship between risk and return, the third is analyzing financial information. So in this module, we're going to go over um, how to compute standardized financial statement, how to perform financial ratio analysis, and in order to give us more information, so these are the basic tools. Um, a more advanced analysis will include topics such as the DuPont identity, and as well as um, computing the internal and sustainable growth rate. All of these are tools that allow us to use information from the financial statement to answer um, critical decisions that financial managers have to make. Um, these are also important tools that investors use to analyze the fundamental value of a firm. So if you're interested in fundamental analysis of value investing, this is an essential module um, provide, and you will provide you with the tools that you need to analyze whether if a company is a is performing well and more importantly whether or not a company is worth investing in as an investment the best way to understand this concept is through an example so this is important please um open up or download and print out the financial statement that is contained in the spreadsheet um, and we'll use all the numbers that's included in this spreadsheet in this lecture as you can see in this one, in this um, spreadsheet, there are two financial statements that are included. The first is the income statement. So it's important. I'm going to give a brief review on the income statement. So income statement includes revenue or sales, and cost of goods sold, depreciation. So if you take revenue minus cost of goods sold, you have gross profit minus depreciation and other fixed costs. We have earnings before interest and tax. Another name for this is operating income. It's very important to know all the different terms associated with um, the financial statements because different companies may decide to use different terms um, and they all mean the same thing. Uh, after interest, we have taxable income or sometimes this is called earnings before tax. Subtract tax, we have net income or net profit. If a company has preferred stock, we can subtract preferred stock dividend and that the remaining are uh, incomes available to common stockholders. And the $166,550 that's, that's available to common stockholders, the company can pay common dividend out of it. So if the company decided to pay $15,000 in common dividend, then the remaining $151,550 that is still with the firm is considered retained earnings, and that will go towards increase, increasing common stock equity. So this information that you'll find in an income statement, and this information that you'll find in the statement of um, two equity holders. There are other information on this handout as well. Um, these are what we consider market information. These are the number of shares outstanding for this company that was 20,000 and the market share price per share. These two information, uh, market, especially market price per share, is not included in the income statement and that's why I highlighted it in yellow. This is what you will find on the day-to-day -day quotation on a stock, um, on a market, market um, stock market. Another very important financial statement is called a balance sheet. So you have all seen this in accounting. In here, we have two years worth of balance sheet. The main difference between a balance sheet and an income statement is that a balance sheet is a single point in time. So when you have um, 2015, this is the balance sheet as of December 31st. So this is the company's um, asset value as of December 31st, 2015 and December 31st, 2016. So what that means is that this is the beginning balance and this is the ending balance for the year 2016. Um, so I'll just have you a quick review of the account that's under balance sheet. So you should know when you see an account whether or not that number will come from the income statement or the balance sheet. So um, on the asset side of the balance sheet, all the assets are uh, ordered in liquidity. So meaning that the fastest you can convert it into cash 
the earlier it is in the balance sheet. So cash obviously is the most liquid, is the, is often, is, is the first item, followed by accounts receivable, by inventory, and then fixed assets, and then other, other assets that may include intangibles and goodwill. Goodwill is almost always the last item on the balance sheet because it's very hard to convert goodwill into cash. On the liability side, we start with current liability and then long-term liability. Equity, preferred stock is considered part of equity. Common stock and pay in surplus, this is how much the company generate by selling new equity. So oftentimes you'll notice that there's no change in this account from year to year because a company does not often sell new stocks. That is a rather rare occurrence. Uh, on the other hand, retain earnings will increase as you can see in here. The change in retain earning from year to year it can be infer from the additions to retain earnings, the items from up here. So notice that additions to retain earnings represents the increase to the retain earnings account from that year's operation. Cumulative retain earnings is what is on the firm's balance sheet at the end of each year. And together we have, of course, when you add up liability and equity, you will end up with it should equal to total asset. So this is a review of the two, of two very important financial statements, the income statement and the balance sheet. Next, we're going to take a look at how, what, how do we interpret this number, what information can we garland by looking at these financial statements. So remember that the goal of financial statement analysis is to provide information, useful information. And we know that the com uh, different companies have different size. And even for the same company, it may change and grow or, or, or shrink in size over time. So looking at absolute numbers, dollar amounts, oftentimes does not give us the uh, sufficient information. So a very common approach to analyzing financial st statements is to standardize them. Standardize, another name for standardized financial statement is common size financial statement. So common size means that we convert the numbers, dollar amount, into a percentage. So this is a very useful rule of thumb, and you should put this in your notes, is that when we are computing common size balance sheets, the denominator, we're going to divide everything by total asset. So to compute a percentage of inventory, using the, um, the income statement that uh, the balance sheet that we have just seen will divide inventory. So notice that in here, inventory is $485,000. So using 2016 number, and we'll divide that by total asset. So total asset is $3,096,550. So we'll do that for every single item or every single entry in the balance sheet. So what that tells us is that 15.66% of the company's asset is, you know, it, it is held in the form of inventory. Now to practice, let's compute the percentage as if uh, all the remaining items, so cash, accounts receivable, plan and equipment, accounts payable, notes payable, and so forth, compute every single item as a percentage of total assets. So in other words, you need to divide every single number by total asset. That will give you a common size balance sheet. Now go ahead and pause the video and check and see if your calculation is correct. So here is the um, Balance sheet for 2016 express as a common size format, meaning that every all the dollar amount converted into percentages. Next, we're going to look at the income statement. So to compute the, income, the common size income statement, so again, this is the important distinction. We convert all the numbers, dollar value, as a percentage of sales, meaning that we divide every single number by sales. So in contrast for balance sheet, the denominator is total assets. For income statement, the denominator is sales. So for the cost of goods sold, for example, 
we will look at how we'll divide cost of goods sold of $580,000 by sales of $850,000. So we have cost of goods sold, which is from the income statement, $580,000 divided by sales of $850,000. So again, to practice, um, co convert the entire income statement. So what that means is divide every single line item by sales, and that will give you the common size income statements. Now pause the video, take a moment to check and see if you get the same answer. Great. Now, what does this number mean to us? We said that the dollar amount oftentimes is less useful than the percentage. So with the percentage, they allow us to compare our performance over time and also with other firms whose size may be much different than us, than our company. They can be bigger or they can be smaller. So this tells us that our cost of goods sold is 68%. Which tells which we translate into a profit margin, a gross profit margin of about thirty-two percent, a little less than thirty-two percent. Um, the whether or not that's a good or bad number depends a lot on the industry. So a lot of times we will find that companies in the same industry tend to have very similar um, cost of goods sold percentage. So for example, um, restaurants oftentimes have a, a cost of goods sold percentage of about sixty percent. Um, so depending on what companies, and, and this is very important compared to the industry, am I better, doing better than the industry or am I doing worse than the industry? Uh, the same is true for the other ratios. Uh, my cash ratio is 2%. Am I keeping too much money on hand? My accounts receivable ratio uh, and my inventory ratio, again, am I t keeping too much inventory on hand or am I not keeping, keeping enough inventory on hand? So to answer those questions, we will need to comp compare the ratios that we computed against an industry average. The common size statement is our first attempt at understanding how our company per, um, performs. So to summarize, um, why do we compute standardized financial statements? And the main reason is so that it's easier to um, compare with other companies in the same industry. And also if a company has been growing over time, that allows us to make a more, um, objective comparison and more meaningful comparison um, against our own growth, our own history. So last, so if we make more revenue this year than last year, of course our cost is also going to go up, but are we becoming more profitable or less profitable? Um, looking at the numbers by themselves will not answer that question. Looking at a percentage, on the other hand, will allow us to make that statement. So for example, even if both cost of goods sold and revenue go up, as it would typically, uh, we can see whether or not as a percentage did our cost percentage go up or down. So the use of standardized financial statement is, 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 is applies to managers as well as investors. Um, computing standardized financial statements is the first step. The next step is to then further drill down to answer more complex questions. So for example, we may find that our inventory percentage is very high compared to the industry average. What is causing that? What is driving our inventory percentage to be too high? To answer that question, we next will turn to ratio analysis.